To be kind It is a giving of the peace in your mind To a stranger, to a friend To give in such a way that has no end We are love We are one We are how we treat each other when the day is done we are peace, we are war, we are how we treat each other and nothing more. And to be bold, to be brave, it is a thinking that the heart can still be saved. And the darkness can come quick, the dangers in
Good morning. Good morning and happy Easter. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church of Berkeley. I'm Reverend Marcus Liefert, and I'm so glad you're here with us this morning. If you are new to us, we hope that you will feel welcome here, no matter who you are or how you make your living, no matter whom you love or how you experience the sacred, we hope you'll feel welcome among us here. Everyone's invited to join us in the social hall all the way across the atrium for a meal after the service. We hope you'll stick around for conversation and food together. We have a memory book in the back of the sanctuary where you're welcome to write a joy or a sorrow, a grief or gratitude, anything that's on your heart that you'd like lifted up, read aloud during our service this morning. You may also light a candle there for a silent memory or prayer. We have been talking about the body and celebrating our holy embodiment this season leading up to Easter, and so I want to know, did any of you enjoy in your body some sugar this morning? <laughs> yeah? Did any, any of you eat some sugar before breakfast this morning? Yeah? Did any of you eat a peep? Anybody eat a peep? Oh, look, we have... We have Little Beauregard Peep, thank you for joining us. Uh, I, I, I used to love Peeps. Oh, I could eat the whole package bright and shiny there in my Easter basket. I tried one a few years ago. They're disgusting. <laughs> I, they make better clothing than food. Well, whether you've had your Peeps or some chocolate, whatever sugar is rushing up through your veins to aliven you this morning, I hope that your whole being, flesh and all, is ready to celebrate. Would you rise in body or in spirit, and we'll sing together, Lo, the day of days is here. Frederick, also known as Ginger, and I'm your worship associate today. And as we light our chalice to begin our worship, we remind ourselves that our land occupies land in Huchiung, the unceded territory of the Chochenyo speaking Ohlone people. May we have the humility and courage to do our part to restore what has been broken and the wisdom to live in new solidarity with indigenous communities and the earth. Let us kindle our chalice with these words by Elizabeth Strong. Out of the earth rises a light, 
rises life, rises spring. May we join with the miracle that is springtime and enter into life with lightness and joy. Out of spirit rises faith, rises hope, rises love. May we join with the miracle that is Easter time and enter into life with hope and love. Let us resurrect with spring. Let us resurrect with the spirit and enter into renewed life as we gather into our time of worship here this Easter morning. Will you join me in saying our covenant? Love guides this church. The quest for truth and justice is its common purpose to give thanks, listen deeply, speak with care, honor our differences, and seek and grant forgiveness. These things we covenant with one another. Thank you. So I invite Heaven Walker, our Director of Family Ministries, and any children who want to come up to talk with her a little bit about spring and what you're noticing this time of year. But I'll also mention as they're coming up, we are not going to sing our children out today. Children are welcome to stay through the whole service, but there is child care, and you're welcome to take them out to the field where they'll be playing games and hanging out anytime throughout the service. So happy Easter, everybody. 
Have we noticed anything new today? We just heard a beautiful piece of music called The Rustling of Spring. And we saw all these beautiful pictures. How do we know that it's spring? Has anybody noticed anything that feels a little bit different today that makes us think that just maybe it could be spring? She said that she saw dandelions. Raise your hand if you saw dandelions. I did. What else did people see? <laughs> Flowers blooming and spring being, being pretty. Does anybody think a spring is pretty? Yes. Did anybody else see any flowers blooming or things that were pretty? Yeah. What did you see? I just saw overall more plant life and overall life. More plant life and overall more life. That's wonderful observation. Yeah. What did you see? She saw the sun shining so that she can wear short sleeves. Wonderful. <laughs> what did you see? Yes, that's a big thing, right? So it's still light out when we're eating dinner. We get more daylight now. That's definitely spring happening. Anything else? Who saw bees? Anybody see bees? Who's afraid of bees? Anybody afraid of bees? <laughs> That's important to know. So sometimes the things that feel a little bit creepy are really good. The bees are out too because the bees are helping the flowers that we like so much, right? <laughs> they might or they might not. <laughs> I think. And I know for me, my, my roses, I, I'm starting to see that they're getting ready to bloom. I see rose hips in my yard, and that's, roses are my favorite, so that's exciting for me. Anyone else have any interesting things that they have seen for spring? Yes, I may have seen Tom Turkey on the way up the hill with his friends in the road. <laughs> Anybody see the turkeys on the way up the hill with all their feathers strutted out? <laughs> all right, well, happy spring, happy Easter, everyone, and I'm so glad that we get to enjoy this beauty together. Blessed be.
I invite you to take a deeper breath, to take a moment to rest more deeply in your seat, to feel yourself rooted in this good earth, feel your connection to this holy planet, this piece of ground we share where life is coming back. We pull the wilting daffodil heads from the stalks, snapping the fertile top from the stems and leaving the vital green remainder to keep soaking up the golden spring sunlight, to keep nourishing the bulb under the earth, to strengthen the resolve to live and hold on and sprout and bloom once more. So many little deaths are required for this living. A broken dish in a set that will never be complete again. A child's favorite shirt now outgrown. Hoped for plans that never come to pass. A home no longer accessible to aching joints. So much we must release and let go. And sometimes death is not the inevitable turning of the earth, but instead a cruel violence wrought of empires restless for control, always ready to destroy life that is inconvenient to their ends. Even as we accept the inevitable deaths inherent in this living, let us never grow accustomed to the violence that is the currency of empire. God of sunshine and green stem, of life determined to return, reveal in us a vision of violence transformed of swords turned into plowshares, of a cross become a symbol of hope, a tree of life, remind us that even death is not only an absence, but a resource. Let us bask in the love our grief reveals, the way the headless stem basks in the light, receiving what we may not know we need until the seasons have turned and turned again, strengthening that which lies beneath the surface. In this stillness, in this silence we share together, this time of quiet, may we be good stewards of our own unglamorous, lumpy, brown bulbs buried in the soil, letting go again and again of that which is spent, preparing always for resurrection.
In this community of care and witness, we lift up one another through the seasons of our lives. We hold those joys and sorrows among us. Today with Carrie Simpson, we are celebrating International Transgender Visibility Day. Carrie shares, I appreciate all the allies in this community. May every community someday be full of allies. Jim Gasparini shares, thinking of my sister Sue, whose cancer may be approaching its final stages. She hopes to live to see her son graduate in May. With Dr. Maria Michael, ask for prayers for my brother Kellyanne and their family as they travel to Mecca for Ramadan with their chosen Hussan and Matik. May all the Muslims who celebrate Ramadan have peace and the privilege to pray. With Camden, we honor for my mom who was put on hospice this past week and my dad, who's her steadfast caretaker. We lift up Allie this morning, who said goodbye to her dear dog, Cal, this weekend. So hard to say goodbye to our loyal pets. And Therese, we lift up with a rest from striving wishing for a good night's sleep. May it be so. And Phoebe raises what so many of us have on our hearts day in and day out. Our hearts go out to the people of Gaza. With Katrin, we lift up prayers of gratitude for the reality of the ever-present possibility of new life that is only possible through the natural cycles of birth, death, and rebirth. May our collective consciousness emerge into a love of life and each other that could one day keep us from creating suffering for any living being. And with Sheila, we offer gratitude, grateful that my, sister, my sister's heart valve replacement has been successful. She's almost back to normal. For these we have lifted up and named aloud, and for all that yet remains in the silent sanctuaries of our hearts, may we know that what each of us brings here is held in the loving embrace of this community, and by that love beyond all naming, that love that cannot and will not let us go. May it be so, and amen. I invite you to Remain seated as we sing together, Now the Green Blade Riseth. Love 
father was teaching his daughter about Jesus at Christmas. This is from a This American Life story from a few years ago. The father to his four-year-old daughter who was asking questions about this guy who seemed to be at the center of a story that mostly had to do with Christmas trees and presents wanted to know who, who this baby Jesus was. And, and so dad was explaining about this, this teacher, this prophet who came with, with a message. And, and he, over and over again, he found himself talking about the teaching of Jesus, to, to love your neighbor as yourself, that all people should be loved, should be treated well. And his daughter liked this idea, so she, she was really getting into this Jesus guy. And then it was a few weeks later in January, and they were driving by a church with a a crucifixion uh, on the side of the church, and the daughter noticed and pointed up at this body up there on the cross and said, who's that? And dad realized, oh, we didn't quite get to that part of the story. <laughs> well, he said, that's, that's Jesus. Uh, he ended up, you know, the end of the story is that he ended up running afoul of the Roman Empire, and they didn't think that his message, that those teachings that he was giving were such a good idea. They were kind of threatened by them, and so they killed him. And she took that in. She was a little sad about it, but kind of thought about this Jesus guy. I kept thinking about him. Pretty soon it was a, a day off, a holiday from school, and they were out for breakfast, and she saw a, a picture, this time of Martin Luther King, and she pointed it out to her dad and asked, who's that? And she, he said, oh, well, that's, that's Martin Luther King Jr. That's why we have the day off from school today. That's why we get to, to celebrate today. We're celebrating his birthday. And she, of course, said, well, who is he? And, and he said, well, he was a preacher. And she said, a preacher for Jesus? And he said, well, yeah, actually, yeah, he was, he was a preacher for Jesus. And, and she said, well, what was his message? And he said, well, he thought that everyone should be treated fairly and, and equal, that no matter who you are or what color your skin is, that you should be treated fairly, treated the same. And she said, well, that sounds just like Jesus. And he realized for the first time, apparently. Yeah, you're right. That it, it was kind of the same message. And then she turned to him and said, did they kill him too? In Toni Morrison's Beloved, there's a moment when a black woman running away from slavery is nursed back to life by a young white girl. They meet in a clearing where the woman has left herself up for dead. Her feet are numb, and as the girl massages her feet and they begin to feel again, it is excruciatingly painful, and she says, anything dead coming back to life hurts. Anything dead coming back to life hurts. I don't think resurrection is about a redemptive suffering. It's not about the suffering, the pain that is good for us and helps us come back to life. It's not about an atonement for anybody's sins. And we know that this is inherent in our, in our Unitarian and Universalist traditions who we hold some skepticism about the whole thing. 
But it doesn't mean we need to walk away from the story entirely. I was reminded of this by a conversation that, that two young people, they were probably about eight years old at the time, Marta and Maya had in the back of a minivan on the way to soccer practice. Maya was a Unitarian Universalist, Marta a Catholic, and I don't know how on the way to soccer practice the theory of transubstantiation, I can't even say the word, transubstantiation, the theology of atonement came up, but this is what they were talking about that day. And, and it was Maya's mom turning her head around at the phrase, don't worry, Marta, we eat Jesus too. <laughs> it really caught her attention. So she tuned in, and, and Maya began to explain how, of course, we don't eat the Eucharist here, but we, we do have this idea of the interdependent web of all existence. And that in Maya's eight-year-old explanation, those cells and atoms of Jesus' body, they didn't go anywhere. They decomposed back into the earth. And generation by generation, they took their place somewhere in this cosmic reality. And so there could be one atom of Jesus in the bread they had eaten that morning, or maybe even in peeps. <laughs> I think this is what Easter is about. Stay with me. Easter <laughs> is a sugar rush. Easter's the moment when the sap rises. You know how the sap of the maple tree, the, 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 maple, the, the sugar maple, the sap all comes on down into its base, into its roots down below the earth while it hibernates through the winter, while it lets all that it does not need die. And then this time of the year, that sap rises back up through the tree, rises up. That's how we get our maple syrup, is the tree giving the gift of its sap back into its limbs and is overflowing with more that we can enjoy this sugar rush of Easter. But there's something more to the story. There's something more than the natural turning of the season. There's something about crucifixion and its violence that is held sacred in this story. That, 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 that is not the end of the story. So how do we get from a violent crucifixion to a resurrection that lands real in our bodies that can fit with the skepticism of our rational minds, the domination culture, the culture of empire, it tells us to respond to violence with vengeance. But when we are connected to ourselves, when we are connected to that source of life rising through the earth, rising in our veins, when we allow life to flow through us and are not stuck in trying to make the past different than what it was, the response we feel to tragedy is not vengeance, but lamentation. Lamentation that holds through its public expression, through moving in the collective body, both the hunger for accountability and the release of mercy to hold accountability and mercy together this is the call of lamentation. And so the scene is, in that story, Mary Magdalene and Mother Mary, Mary the mother of James and Salome, they, they're weeping. They're rending their clothes in that traditional Jewish ritual of grief. They're wailing. And the tradition holds that in that moment, in the midst of their lament, they become aware of the resurrection. And when I first read that story, it almost felt like a gotcha kind of a moment. Like, oh, you, you didn't need to be crying after all. But really what's happening, I think, is a deeper reflection on the necessity of lamentation to come to the joy of resurrection. 
resurrecting that idea, that teaching, that message that animated Jesus or King or so many others requires that we give public expression to the private pain that we hold in our bodies. Move that which is held in individual bodies into a collective body through our outpouring of anger and grief. This is what happens when a moment is catapulted onto our collective consciousness through whether it's Black Lives Matter or, or Me Too or this trans day of visibility. A moment when people say, this pain is not mine alone. This is ours to share. And through sharing it, we will unlock our moral imagination and realize we can do something about it. These deaths, these traumas, these violations, they're not inevitable. They are a moral wrong that must be transformed, and that transformation it begins in the sharp public repudiation of lamentation. Lamentation is the first sign of resurrection. Empire wants us to believe that war and ecological devastation are inevitable, to go numb to the pain that we hold in our bodies, but we can resurrect in our flesh, in our collective body, a liberatory imagination that knows something happens next. You may have been crucified, some part of you. It may have been on some long forgotten playground or around the dinner table. It may have been at a job that could not hold the whole of your humanity. It might have been by a political process that put you or your family's safety on the line. You may have been crucified, some part of you, but they didn't get you. The story didn't end there. Baby Suggs, the healer, the mystic in Beloved, she makes a space, a different space in the story. She invites all of her people, her people whose bodies have been used and beaten and broken by those who could not see their humanity, but she makes a clearing for them to join in a ritual of lamentation. She puts the children first at the center and then invites the men to dance and move, invites the women to weep and cry. She doesn't know yet about the trans revolution that's on its way, but they would be there too, laughing and weeping and dancing together. They begin to mix. And Baby Suggs offers this benediction. She says, in this here place, we flesh, flesh that weeps, laughs, flesh that dances on bare feet in grass, love it, love it hard. Let us Lament, yes, weep over all that has been lost. This is what love looks like in the face of the horrors of empire. But the story doesn't end with lamentation. No, lamentation makes room for the resurrection. When the freely given gift of the maple sap rushes up as our flesh is nourished by the flesh of the trees, our flesh intertwined in the unending death and resurrection of the world to which we belong, let us partake not only in weeping but in dancing and laughing, drinking that sweet syrup, drinking deeply from the tree of life. May the sugar rush of Easter rise in you and resurrect whatever has lain dormant long enough. Pass the peeps. Amen.
We invite you now into the spiritual practice of generosity. Instead of passing the plate, you can give electronically by scanning the QR code on the back of your badge, or you could put cash or check donation in the donation envelope that you'll find in the back of the pew in front of you. Write your name on it and mark offering plate or pledge, and then put it in the donation box besides the fountain in the atrium as you leave the service. Now, each week, half of the offering plate is shared with a nonprofit good neighbor organization recommended by our wonderful Social Justice Council. Thank you so much for practicing generosity with UUCB and with our good neighbors. Offerings of any amount are graciously accepted. The good neighbor for this month is Pogo Park. Pogo Park's mission is to create magical play spaces for children everywhere, transforming lives by transforming public spaces. Pogo Park transforms broken and li little used city parks in America's inner city tough neighborhoods, such as Richmond's Iron Triangle, into safe, green, beautiful public spaces for children to play.
please join me now in dedicating our offering. We dedicate our offering and ourselves to the mission of this congregation to create loving community, inspire spiritual growth, and encourage lives of integrity, joy, and service. Happy Easter, everyone. I'm Charis Domador, your Connections Coordinator. If you're new to our church and you'd like to learn more about how to get connected, I welcome you to find me or any of the greeters at the welcome table in the atrium after the service. To find out what's happening in the life of our community, you can always check the news link on the homepage of our website, where you'll find our weekly email newsletter, The Week Ahead, which includes a list of activities, announcements, and contact information. This week, I want to especially lift up our April events. If you want to hear some more of what you just heard, which was amazing in my opinion, our choir Luminescence will be in concert with the Kensington Symphony Orchestra on April 20th at 7.30. Tickets will be available at the door. We invite you to our Passover Seder on April 23rd at 5.30 where donations will be welcomed. As part of our Earth Day celebration, we'll be screening the documentary, The Letter, on April 27th. And a word about Reverend Marcus's installation ceremony. It's 14 days away. That's <laughs> 21, it's three Sundays. <gasps> Forgive me, my maths did not add up today. <laughs> three Sundays away. April 21st at 2.30 at p.m. Everyone is welcome, and we ask that you remember to RSVP. You can do that online or stop by our table after the service. The ceremony will also be live streamed, and it will be followed by a wonderful party. Let's rise once more in body or spirit and join in singing our closing song, Lo, the Earth Awakes Again. Bond and pain, Alleluia. Bring me leaf and flower and spring, Alleluia. To adorn with happy day, Alleluia. Once a out a hand or touch a shoulder or, or an elbow or just reach out to the great beyond. Let us be connected. Let us remember the truth that we are one body, that we depend on each other more than we know. 
And we hear flesh, flesh that weeps, flesh that laughs, something always happens next. Amen. <laughs>